Savage Garden. Nah, 1990s rock band. Savage Memes? No, that might be a little too 2020. How about Randy Macho Man Savage? Well, getting closer, but I think instead we're gonna go ahead and discuss a 100% mall back 2016 from Savage Grace. Oh yeah! Macho Man Savage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's just me being goofy. Anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the 2016 Sav Savage Grace Mallback. These guys are based out of, uh, well, they've got two, two tasting rooms, but they're supposed to be based out of White Sam in Washington, but their tasting room is across the river in Hood River, Hood River, Oregon. They also have a Woodenville wine tasting room as well, but I did purchase this at a local wine shop here on the Eden Plot Plateau called Plateau Wines and Beer. If you are in Pierce County or Southern King County, please go ahead and stop by. Plateau Wines is, it was a great store. Enjoyed my time while I was there. That being said, let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, according to uh, Savage Grace, now this is a 2016. Savage Grace does have the new 2018 listed on their website. Now, this is a 100% whole cluster Malbec. Uh, I probably should have put my glasses on here. The glasses kind of glare under the lights, so I kind of take them off, but reading glasses is part of getting older. Uh, this wine is made from Malbec grapes and reminiscent of a lighter style made in the Lower Valley where the grapes are called coat. It was fermented using whole clusters and native yeast and then aged for two years in neutral French oak barrels. Now, I did have another version of this a couple weeks ago that I absolutely loved. My wife was not a big fan of it, which is kind of fine because you know what, that just leaves more for me to drink. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. The color on this, I would say is a medium ruby. Now I will say I did pour this about 15 minutes ago. Because this is a 2016, I figured since I didn't want to decant it, allowing it to a little bit of oxygen in the glass probably was a smart thing to do. On the nose on this wine, right off the bat, I'm getting an earthy, funky blackberry, blackberry jam. And then something I didn't expect I'd find in a lot of wine um, before, but it's kind of, did you, when you were a kid, did you remember getting those little cartons of raisins? and you open them up and that kind of a funky dried fruit smell came through. That's exactly what I'm getting on this nose as well. There is a hint, just a slight hint of star anise or licorice. And then the biggest thing, that kind of a tertiary note that I'm getting, kind of very earthy dried leaves note on this. I'm really hoping that the flavors that I, or the senses that I'm getting on the nose really does translate to the flavors on this. Because I am a big fan of Malbec. I mean, those that know me know, my favorite uh, varietal is a Walla Walla grown Syrah. But Malbec in the last couple years has really started to catch on here in the state of Washington in particular. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now I did I don't remember what I paid for this particular bottle, but I do know that the 2018 Cote Denine, um, and the Denine is uh, the vineyard from where it is picked out of the Rattlesnake Hills. This is called Cote Dependent Red Wine, Denine Vineyard. So let's go ahead and have a sip of this, shall we? Mmm. Right off the bat, this is a medium plus to full bodied wine. It is absolutely savory. Tannins, they attack the palate. 
They're a little on the grainy side, but overall, that's not something that I'm going to uh, mark it down for. Some of you, if you don't like that, uh, a little bit more of a grainy, a little bit more of an aggressive tannin, you may not like this wine. Um, I do. I like that. I think for me personally, um, it allows for a much more full experience with regards to being on my palate. Now, also the acidity. Now, this is a medium, I would say this is a medium acidity. I'm not getting a whole lot of tartness. There is a little bit of that uh, dried fruit tartness that you get. Alcohol on this, I believe it sits at 12.5%. Sweetness, this is, sits anywhere between off dry and dry. Um, on the fruit notes, now Malbec is notorious for not having a very long finish. This finish here probably tends more towards the medium side, but on the finish, uh, excuse me, on the palate, I am getting a lot of that blackberry, blackberry jam note. The star anise comes through a little bit more on the palate than it did on the nose. Um, the raisins, not so much there. Uh, I think that blackberry jam type of feeling to it kind of overwhelm it. But like I said, the, the star anise, the licorice comes out just a little bit more. But on the finish, and this is where that earthy funk, so if you don't like that earthy funk where you're getting, when I, and when I mean by earthy funk, I'm talking dried leaves, I'm talking mushrooms, I'm talking uh, decaying ground, that type of note, it's lingering on my palate uh, towards that medium finish, which is causing my uh, salivary glands to, to really work over time. So this is a very savory wine. But if you don't like that type of note, and this is one thing that I know my wife doesn't like about it, is that earthy funkiness to a lot of wines. This wine has it in spades. That dried leaves note and that earthy note really lingers past, uh, past the fruit. So let's go ahead. I'm going to double check on this. Let's have another sip of this. Yeah. That star anise, the blueberry, there's a little bit more of a raisin note that I got. And it kind of attached itself to the tannins a little bit. And I'm actually getting a little bit of a sugar plum note as well this time. So, which is kind of odd because I didn't get that on the nose. Anyways, Savage Grace, uh, this is a 2016. Their website says they had the 2018 in there. Boy, can I, uh, what I'd like to say, go ahead and buy this. You know what? If you like a full-bodied Malbec that's going to have a lot of earthy notes, that's balanced with some of the uh, black bl blackberry and blackberry jam and raisiny type of notes, you're going to love this wine. However, if you don't like the ag aggressive tannins, somewhat grainy tannins on this one, you're not going to like this wine. This wine is not for everybody. According to the, what I'm looking at here, you know, he started his vineyard in 2011. Um, he started with Cab Franc. So and as you guys all know, Cab Franc can be also a very aggressive uh, type of wine. And I think what he's done here with his, and I'm going to read directly from his website, his vision is to make old world style, lower alcohol, balanced and expressive wines. He's continuing to deepen his core understanding of all stages of the vinification process to put the philosophy of low intervention winemaking into practice where the grape, vineyard, and vintage form a unique balance. And I gotta say, I think the minimalistic way of winemaking is going to be making a much larger comeback over the next few years. And I do believe that if you wanna get a good feel for how that's gonna go, pick up a bottle of this over, uh, like I said, uh, the 2016 is over at Plateau Wines uh, in Edenclaw. Again, it's a great little store. Contact them. They may have, Savage Grace may have some of this in their library. They don't have it posted on their website, but they do have the new 2018 release. So anyways, have you had Savage Grace? Is there another Savage Grace that maybe I need to take a look at? Please put down in the comments down below. And also in the comments, let me know what you think of this particular review. So anyways, like, subscribe, share this video if this video has helped you out in exploring a different Pacific Northwest wines. I will say, and I'm going to go ahead and put this now towards the end of the video because let's be honest, very few people watch this video, but I am thinking about putting a stop to the channel uh, temporarily. I love Pacific Northwest wines, but it does take a lot of time for me to 
come up with a bottle, uh, you know, do the tastings on it, edit the video, and for the amount of effort that I put into it, I don't know if I need to make a, make some changes. So for those of you that are subscribed that do like this channel and you like what you're seeing, please also put down in the comment down below what you'd like me to do differently, if anything. So that would help me either change the channel or grow it in a different particular way. So anyways, folks, as always, life is too short for bad wine. This is a pretty good wine. I, I really did enjoy this. And like I said, my wife's not going to enjoy it as much. That just leaves more for me. Anyways, life is too short for bad wine, folks. Cheers. Have a great Sunday. Mm. Now I got a lot of bloopers to edit out, too. Savage Garden. No. Savage Memes? Nah, it's too 2020. Randy Macho Man Savage? Almost. How about a wine called Savage Grace? Let's go ahead and dump into Jump. 